Demetrius Johnson, you are in Manila in the thick of it. How's fight week going? Fight week's going great, man. Uh, first hydration weigh-in was easy. Already got that. And now we're just, uh, we just got done with the rules meeting. Um, all medicals are done. You know, I haven't got any bad news saying that I can't compete, so everything's good. When you guys faced off, you couldn't help but notice he's a pr pretty big dude for a flyweight. He's kind of tall, but then again, I guess you're bigger now as well. Uh, you get to put on a little more weight at one championship. Has that been nice for you or, or a new challenge in terms of your opponents being also bigger? Uh, I think it's part of my career. You know, even when I was competing in North America at 135, I was fighting guys who were 5'11", 5'9", 5'8". So I think it just comes to the territory. You know, a lot of these guys who fight at the strawweight division, uh, which is lower than mine, we're all the same height, but I don't know how they make it. I think I'm just more dense. Um, and, you know, everybody has different body types. There's a couple of athletes, you know, me and Jay Sakio are kind of like the same height. Um, but, you know, everybody uh, carries their weight different. You uh, had a little bit of a break, I think, before your one championship debut. It was a little while back now, Tokyo, but do you feel you're in your rhythm in one? Like like you mentioned, you know, you, you've done your hydration test. Do you feel you're getting your rhythm now? Uh, I'm not sure. I won't find out until I get into the ring. You know what I mean? I feel like I got my rhythm, you know, during, you know, a competition week. But as far as, you know, jumping in the, the ring or the cage and competing, we'll see. Um, we'll find out. No Matt Hume in your corner this time? Well, I don't think Matt Hume will be in my corner until, the, till, I don't know. I don't think he'll ever be in my corner again. So, But it is what it is. Do you feel like now that, because you're pretty, you've got a lot of wisdom, you've got a lot of experience. Do you feel that you're, I don't know, because it's, it's an individual sport, right, but it's also a bit of a team sport as well. Do you feel you're wise enough to, to carry it yourself in a way out there? I mean, obviously, I think I am, but at the end of the day, it's, it's you know, the person who trains me. I mean, you look at all the athletes here. You look at Team Lakai, their head coach, and then you look at all the Japanese athletes. Uh, Ryo Shannon is in their corner. You look at all the athletes. You always have, you know, you look at Eddie Alvarez. He has Mark Henry, uh, Martin Nug, and he has, uh, you know, uh, his, his professor. And all those guys have a professor. I'm the only athlete who's almost kind of taking that next progression uh, in the evolution of the martial arts where it's like, you know, I, I trained with my, my head coach for so, so, so long, you know, and of course he can't be in my corner, but now I'm going out there and competing, and, you know, it's, so far it's been fun. It's, it's, it's a wholly different experience. You've already got one hell of a legacy in this game. What would winning this Grand Prix do for that legacy, do you think? That will fucking solidify the legacy even that stronger. For me to be like over here and compete in Asia, a brand new market, brand new athletes, instead of seeing the same talent pool, uh, in North America, I think it would, you know, show, and you look at all the great, you know, mixed martial arts that have come through my generation, you know, Pro Cop, Renly Silva, Shogun, Hua, Ray Pace Jackson, Philip Milenko, the mess just goes on and on, Gegor Musasi. Uh, those guys have all competed on both sides of the uh, the, the world. And, uh, you know, obviously they did it the opposite. They went eastern, then uh, northern or western. Now I'm here in uh eastern side of the world competing.